Religion is not important. Really, why am I here? Why am I here? Everyone's story. One day he decided to travel by train a long journey. He enjoyed his journey. He also faced some difficulties, but finally when he arrived at the station, something strange happened. He didn't know what he wanted, and he started wondering, why am I here? This story is similar to many stories we live in our world. We live till we arrive at the station of death. Some don't know why they live and what's after death. Simple questions. What will happen at the end? Have you ever asked yourself, why am I here? Am I here for a mass fame, to be the richest person, to have the most beautiful partner, or to play music? Well, but what about the end? What's there after death? Simple answer. You're here for a reason. You have a deep profound meaning for your life. When you know this meaning, you will feel the real happiness. The deep meaning is to know Allah and worship Him. And I didn't create the jinn and mankind except to worship me. Quran 51 56. And I did not create jinns and men except for my worship alone. I did not create them to make a partner for me. I do not want any provision off them nor do I want them to feed me. Allah is the provider for His servants, all of them are in need of His provision, He is the Supreme Lord, every mighty, nothing is outside His ability. All of the jinns and men submit to His power, may He be glorified. Adds Zariyayat, 56 58. What does worship mean? Worship mean everything that one says or does for the pleasure of the one God. It's the total submission, obedience and thanking God. Islam looks at the individual as a whole. Say, indeed, my prayer, my rites of sacrifice, my living and my dying are for Allah, Lord of the worlds. Quran 6-162. Say, O Messenger, my prayer and sacrifice is for Allah and in His name, not for anyone else. My life and death is only for Allah, the Lord of all creation, and no one else has any share in that from me. He, may he be glorified, has no partner. There is no one else worthy of worship besides him. Allah has instructed me to accept this pure monotheism and I am the first of those who acknowledge him in this nation. Alan apostrophe am colon 162 to 163. Moreover, it governs all facts of life. To illustrate, this includes, but not limited to, moral, spiritual, political and economic issues subject to a set of laws derived from God. The inner world of a person who worships is settled and stable. He won't feel depressed or hopeless when he faces obstacles and difficulties. Such are the ones who believe, in the message of the Prophet, and where hearts find rest in the remembrance of Allah. Surely in Allah's remembrance do hearts find rest. Quran 13 28. These people whom Allah guides are those who have faith and whose hearts find comfort in the remembrance of Allah and in His glorification and praise and by reciting and listening to His book. Truly it is only natural that in the remembrance of Allah hearts find comfort. R Ra apostrophe D colon 28. What's there after the death? It is logical to reward the criminal and the pacemaker with the same ends, death. Justice is a main concern in Islam. Thus, one day a person will receive back whatever good or bad he does. God says. Or do those who commit evils think we will make them like those who have believed and done righteous deeds, make them, equal in their life and their death? Evil is which they judge. Quran 45 21. Those who commit disbelief and sins through their limbs think I will make them in reward like those who brought faith in Allah and did good deeds, making them equal in this life and the hereafter. Wretched is this judgment of theirs. And Allah created the heavens and earth with complete wisdom and He did not create it in vain, and so that each soul can be rewarded with the good or bad it earned. Allah will not oppress them by decreasing their good deeds or increasing their bad deeds. al jadiyah colon 21-22. Furthermore, in the day of resurrection, the dead will be raised to life again for judgment by God. Those who disbelieve will have a severe punishment, and those who believe and do righteous deeds will have forgiveness and great reward. Quran 35-75. Those who disbelieved in Allah by following the Satan will have a severe punishment. And those who believe in Allah and do good actions will have forgiveness from Allah for their sins and will have a great reward from Him which is paradise. Fatir colon 7. This day every soul will be recompensed for what it earned. Quran 40 17 6. Today, every soul will be rewarded for the action it earned. If it was good, then the reward will be good, and if it was bad, then it will be bad. There will be no injustice on this day, because the judge is Allah who is just. Allah is swift in taking account of His servants, due to His knowledge encompassing them. Ghafir colon 17. Islam is the code of life. Islam says that you can eat, drink and enjoy your life. Yet, don't forget that this world will finish one day, and that you can't live here forever. Islam gives details about every aspect of life. Thus, one can live the worldly life in the best manner and win a great position in hereafter. Whoever does righteousness, whether male or female, while he is a believer we will surely cause him to live a good life. And we will surely give them their reward, in the hereafter, according to the best of what they used to do. Quran 1697. Whoever does good deeds in accordance with the sacred law, whether male or female, while having faith in Allah, we will grant them in this world a good life. By their being pleased with Allah's decree, content and guided towards righteous actions. And we will reward them in the afterlife in accordance with the best good deeds that they used to do in the world. A nail, 97. The whole life is a trial and test by which your final destiny is determined. To conclude. All the profound questions are answered in the Quran. When you become God conscious, you will find yourself clearly.
From the first human being and prophet Adam to the last prophet Muhammad the message to mankind hasn't been changed. All prophets called to worship God, the only true God. O mankind, worship your Lord, who created you and those before you, that you may become righteous. Quran 2:21. O people, worship no one other than your Lord, because he created you and the people before you, so that you may save yourselves from suffering. By following his instructions and keeping away from what he is prohibited. Al-Baqarah 21. Religion is not important. Really. If someone tells you that he is going to take an exam without knowing anything about the exam subject, he will definitely fail the exam. In the same way, this life is like an exam, and we can't do without a curriculum to learn the ways to pass the exam. Can you enter the exam without a curriculum? Why do we need a religion? To begin with, the Creator must give us the guide, a curriculum for this life. This guide is religion. Religion tells us everything we need to pass the examination of this life. Is it fair to think that God creates us and leaves us without informing us, and then judges us and causes some people to fail or pass? Religion teaches us good, so God set us the message in the form of religion to meet the needs of people's lives. And who is better in religion than one who submits himself to Allah while being a doer of good and follows the religion of Abraham, inclining toward truth? And Allah took Abraham as an intimate friend. Quran 4-125 No one is better in religion than the one who surrenders to Allah outwardly and inwardly, does good actions and follows the religion of Abraham. Which forms the basis of the religion of Muhammad, peace be upon him, inclining away from idolatry and disbelief to monotheism and faith. Allah chose his prophet Abraham as a close friend from amongst all of his creation. And Nisa 125. We know right and wrong by ourselves, we don't need a religion, we follow values. Which values? Your values? Or my values? Or God's values? Everybody has his own mind, terms, and concepts. Indeed, God does not accept different values. He accepts his religion only. These are the only values accepted by God after death. Hitler burning the Jews and Stalin killing thousands of people. Right in establishing values. We don't need God, we're happy the way we are. Maybe you are happy right now, but this earth is not a land of happiness, no one actually owns happiness. One day we will face sickness, grief, aging. We might lose someone we love, and also this happiness is not eternal, definitely, all of us will face death. Nothing can stop death. Many people are thought to be happy like actors, singers and even scientists. They were successful in their jobs, they have money, cars, luxury lifestyle, authority and fans. In spite of all of this, they finally fall into deep depression and commit suicide. One day we will die and everyone dies. Then every man and woman will stand alone in front of God to be asked about his beliefs and deeds. This is the exam, we have to be prepared for it. There is no life after death. If there is no life after death so God is unjust? Is God playing with us? God didn't create us in this entire universe in vain. We will be held accountable for our faith and deeds. Belief doesn't matter. What matters is to be a good person. This is the purpose of life. It is a good way of life to be a good person. But, what is after being a good person? Nothing? Just die and become a worm buffet? The righteous and bad people in the same place? With no reward for the good people and no punishment for the bad? Is that fair? If you knew Islam, you'd know that you were almost following its teachings. Why almost but not exactly? Because there is an important chapter that was skipped, which is believing in God and worshipping Him. It is the base on which you'll build your actions. My friend, when God has created human beings He didn't leave them just wondering. Yes, everyone searching for a purpose for this life. Indeed, God has told us why are we here on this planet? He created us here in this life to worship Him alone without any association, and to be good people. God is the owner of this universe and the creator of everything. He decided a purpose and we need to seek it and achieve it before we return to Him. God says. Then did you think that we created you uselessly and that to us you would not be returned? Quran 23-115 So do you think, O people, that I created you as a plaything without any wisdom, so that there will be no reward or punishment as with animals? And that you will not return to me on the day of judgment for the reckoning and recompense? al Mumin 23, 115. Does man think that Allah will leave him neglected without imposing any laws on him? Was this human being one day not a drop of sperm spilt into the womb? Thereafter he was a piece of coagulated blood. Then Allah created him and made his form proportionate. Then he made his species into two types, male and female. Is not the one who created man from a drop, then a clot, able to give life once again to the dead for the reckoning and recompense? Indeed, he is able to do so. al Qiyamah, 75, 36-40. And I did not create the heavens or the earth in vain, but rather I created them out of complete wisdom to prove the power of Allah and so that He is obeyed in them. That is the belief of those who deny the truth who believe they were created in vain. So what are these disbelievers who believe this from the fire of hell on the day of judgment, when they die on the disbelief and bad opinion of Allah they are upon? Sod, 38, 27. Those who commit disbelief and sins through their limbs think I will make them in reward like those who brought faith in Allah and did good deeds, making them equal in this life and the hereafter. Wretched is this judgment of theirs. al Hatsia, 22. And I did not create the heavens, the earth and everything between it in jest and amusement. I only created it due to a profound wisdom, but the majority of idolaters do not know that. Adukan, 38-39
Did God create us in this entire universe playing? We will be held accountable for our faith and deeds. Our faith will determine our destination. Religions are the causes of war. One man made. Moreover, were the most deadly war, World War I and World War II, for a religious purpose? Actually, we cannot blame God for a crime man committed. War is man-made. It is mostly politics not religion. The most deadly wars known in history World War I and World War II, were caused by capitalism, nationalism, and secular reasons. None of Hitler, Mussolini, Stalin, Mao, etc. were religious. They killed millions of people. For World War LL, many studies said that more than 60 million people died in the war, mostly civilians. The Soviet Union lost around 27 million people. Whereas, God says, O oh mankind, indeed we have created you from male and female and made you peoples and tribes that you may know one another. Indeed, the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. Indeed, Allah is knowing and aware. Quran 49 13. O oh people! Indeed, I have created you from one male, your father Adam, and one female, your mother Eve. Therefore, your lineage is the same, so some of you should not take pride in lineage over others. Then, I made you into many nations and dispersed tribes, so that you may recognize one another, not so that you take pride in them, because pride can only be due to Allah consciousness. Indeed, the most noble from among you according to Allah is the one who is most mindful of him. Indeed, Allah is aware of your conditions, knowing of what levels of perfection and deficiency you are on, nothing is hidden from him. al Hujurat colon 13. So God created us different to know each other and exchange knowledge. However, man chooses war. 2. Are all wars evil? In addition to that, are all wars bad? Is it a bad thing to fight tyrants and oppressors? For example, what do you think about the French Revolution? Hang the last priest by the intestines of the last king? The death toll was estimated by tens of thousands, with 16,594 executed by guillotine, 2,639 in Paris, and another 25. Oh, oh, oh in summary executions across France. Thus, the death of tyrants for the freedom of France cannot be considered evil. Religion allows wars to fight against tyrants and unjust regimes. God didn't command us to kill innocent, never. Conclusion. Finally, imagine that you own a factory and you put instructions to be followed to guarantee the best results. If the workers decided to ignore these instructions and work the way they find suitable, and of course you can imagine how flexible this word suitable could be. Could you accept that? Do you think that this project will succeed? Similarly, this applies to life, the Creator has given us values, and we have to follow them. Religion is a divine law that teaches us the teachings of life that leads us to eternal happiness. In addition, religion not only came to adjust the hereafter life, but also came to adjust our worldly life. Now, what is the most attractive point in Islam you are interested to know more about? Ask our team now.